Hello, 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 and it's me, and I am back after countless hours of research because if you haven't noticed, my videos were coming in mono because of how QuickTime was recording the audio. Finally, I'm using a software called OBS, so if this helps somebody, it's over here, and I had to do many hours of uh, trial and error until I was able to record this Pro Tools. I want to thank Chanta. She ultimately sent me the right uh, link to learn about how to get this routing done. So here I am. And by the way, after the right routing, I still had to do trial and errors, delete, uninstall, reinstall, and here I am. So enough of that. Here we are about to learn Delays. Delays are a fascinating world. There are many of them and uh, you can use them in just about anywhere. The first thing that I've done to advance some time was uh, preset them on multiples, uh, multiple settings of them already playable. And I'm gonna go through them really quickly and then we're gonna listen to them. So the first one, it's a phaser. Uh, I have ordered them in a chronological order in the sense that each one of them it's uh, longer than the previous one. A phaser is uh, one that it normally runs between one to two milliseconds. It will have a uh, short rate and a fast depth. This is the modulation that is built into the delay. Many delay plugins will have that. Rate is how fast the uh, oscillator moves and the depth is how how deep that rate is so think about if this is something that you will see it and i normally would do this in my classes is i'll, I'll move my hand but the rate is how fast this will go and the um and the depth is how deep would it be so for example if the depth is just like this and this is a fast rate we'll be moving like this very fast but only to a short depth because this is the most it will move. Now, if my depth is all the way up and this is a short, it's a slow rate, it will move like this, okay? I hope I'm making sense, but for now, the phaser has a short a rate and a, all the way um, a full depth. I'm uh, using mono to stereo delays for most of them, and I normally do a different setting on the two of them because if they are identical, they will sound mono. So the first one is a phaser. Let's listen to what a phaser does. Again, this is a song by my friend and uh, excellent artist, Sarah Lenore, extremely well produced by my buddy, Jose Luis Pagan. Please check them out. And uh, here they are. Here's Sarah singing. First of all, no phaser. Bulletproof and armored vest. Let's hear that again with the phaser on. I have brought the level up to minus three. Should be notorious. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some to taste. As whiskey. Yeah, brighter than a sunset. Um, by uh, using it in a vocal, I'm just trying to demonstrate uh, how they sound, but that does not mean that you want to use it in a vocal track. You may use it, you may not, and it could be applied to just about any track. Uh, phaser. Let's move on to the uh, flanger. It will sound similar. The flanger has a little longer of a time. Again, I'm playing, it normally will be between five and 10 milliseconds. You can make them mono if you want to do so, and it could be any random number. Again, a short rate, full depth. I'm applying a low pass filter and some feedback to this. Let's listen. It should sound similar. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong as whiskey. Yeah, brighter than a sunset. Deeper than the ocean. Let's play to taste. It's never ending feelings of forever. Never giving up this life. Permanently doing it together. A little can go a long way. Let's jump into the chorus. Uh, I use chorus in bass guitars, for example, in electric bass guitars all the time. Uh, phasers could be in drums. Uh, flangers especially could be in drums, especially if you're doing a breakdown or something like that. Uh, you gotta experiment with these things. And, and uh, if one day doesn't work for you, that doesn't mean that another, way, another day will not 
to do it. So I normally keep them in my palette and I experiment with them. And of course, the course is longer, 20 milliseconds to 30 milliseconds. And of course you can play with those numbers that they don't have to be that strict. I normally like to apply a low pass filter so no high frequencies go into the the delays and just because it's sound fake and uh, or sound robotic. Now, if you want to create that sound, be my guest. I am adding some feedback to this and let's listen to a chorus. Bulletproof and armored vest, some strong as whiskey. Just because I said I normally use this on bass guitars, so why don't I do the example? I'm going to go all the way up here to the bass guitar, send, chorus, that I should be able to hear it, if you can find it to me, let's play chorus. I'm going to bring the volume up just because I want to make it notorious, I may solo it. By the way, I have pressed command click on all of these aux returns, I always do that, so that they are in solo isolation or solo safe. Let's play the chorus on the bass guitar. See, I'm exaggerating now. Let's play it in context. Just give some width to the bass guitar. We're in the clouds, higher than the stars hang. Yep. Feeling good without a doubt. Yeah. Loving how this love feels now. Never letting go. So you wouldn't know that there's a chorus in there, but it is there, and uh, I like it. It gives some width to the um, bass guitar. Let's go to the next one. Um, well, I've been playing a little trick on you guys, I got you. Uh, the guitars. Uh, Jose normally duplicates or doubles his guitars naturally by playing them twice. We've discussed this in previous videos. So he played uh, the guitar twice, each one of the times he recorded with two microphones. This time I had muted the right guitars and all this time we've been hearing with the doubler. I use that all the time. If I want to make something kind of a fake stereo, I use that all the time. So I have a doubler for the left side, which is here, and a doubler for the right side, which is here. And uh, they're normally between 25 to 30, 35 milliseconds. I sometimes I do a little bit of this just to slightly change the sound, but not nothing too drastic. And then I put a little lo-fi, and 9 out of 10 doctors recommend lo-fi for any needs. It's free, it's great, I love it. And I added a little distortion. The only reason why I'm doing this, and it's pretty much a copy on the right side, is just to make it sound slightly different. So let's listen to the guitars. Let's start from the... Verse one. If I can. Bulletproof and armored. So all these videos, you guys who had been listening to the second guitars, but today I wanted to demonstrate the use of the doubler, which is already on. And let's listen to the guitar without it and with it. I'm gonna mute sir for a second. Guitar without a doubler. And I'm adding the doubler now. If you can see in the screen, it's gonna be here. So it sounds like there are two guitars that were recorded there. Does it make sense? Again, I'm gonna mute it. Let's apply that same concept to that shaker and that is somewhere in here and let's now send it to the opposite side. I normally do this sending it by to the opposite side. Okay, so where are your doubler? In this case, I'm going to apply this to doubler left because the shaker, which is right here, it's panned to the right. Come, come, come. Come, kitty, kitty. Here it comes. No doubler. Doubler. I like that. Too much, no, back on. So it gives you that rhythm and gives you some space and I don't know, it's just great. Doublers are, I cannot get enough of them. Fantastic, let's move on. Uh, I may leave that there. Let's bring Sarah back. Let's get to the slap. Slap is an effect that was uh, 
used heavily in the uh, eldest times. Um, it's the uh, repetition used on the analog tape machines. And uh, let's check it out. It's about normally around 120 to 140 milliseconds. Again, considering that it's all tape and there was uh, probably a quarter of an inch that was used, I roll out the high frequencies and I add some feedback. And uh, let's listen to that. She's back, no effect, and I add it up. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong as whiskey, yeah, brighter than a sunset. As you can tell, the slap is dead center, and I always can pan this. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong as whiskey, yeah, brighter than a sunset. If you don't know what I was referring before, I was a uh, mono to stereo. I'm going to do it now. So Pro Tools gives you the option to have just a mono plugin or a mono to stereo. You know, when I do mono to stereo, if I just listen the way it is right now, because all of the settings are identical, it will sound still centered. Bulletproof and armored vest. And you can tell here that both of the meters look identical. Bulletproof and armored vest. And then I do a little bit of switch. To make um, smooth switches or changes, you can press command and then move this. I'll move one up a little bit, the other one down a little bit. And then I'll, I normally do a little bit of OCD changes in here, but that should uh, do it. The longer one takes less feedback most of the time. And now let's listen, it should give us a nice stereo effect. Bulletproof and armored vest, some strong as whiskey. It's almost like a reverb, like a room reverb, which I really like. Bulletproof and armored vest, some strong as whiskey, yeah, brighter than a sunset. Bypass. Deeper than the ocean, gets never ending feelings of her. See, although we've been listening to her on the re uh, with the reverb all this time, because we did set that up before. We have a little bit of a hole and a plate with her. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong as whiskey. When I add this slab, it gives me a different sensation, and which I really like. Fools the, the space. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong as whiskey. Yeah, brighter the than hole. a sunset. So this is deeper than the ocean. That's how the hole it's sounds. By the way, it's automated, and that's what it's coming back. And now let's hear the slab. Bulletproof and armored vest, some strong as whiskey, yeah, brighter than. I may cut a little bit more of the high frequencies. Deeper than the ocean, gets never ending feelings of forever, never giving up this life, permanently. I'm gonna stop because I get addicted to it, but. Bulletproof and armored vest, maybe a little goes a long way. Let's jump into the. Um, Actual echoes, normally uh, 50 uh, milliseconds and up starts to be considered echoes, but we normally, or I normally use them in uh, value to the uh, BPM, the bits per minute of the song. There's a formula um, that says that 60,000 milliseconds divided by the BPM bits per minute of the song equals the quarter note value in milliseconds. And these 60,000 comes from the fact that it's 1,000 milliseconds in one second and 60 seconds in one minute. For this song, which is, has a BPM of 87, the quarter note is 689.6. If I come here where it says quarter note over here, we should see the 689. Okay, that's what it is. So these plugins give you the option to just come in here and that's in select whatever value you want, 60 notes, 8 notes, quarter notes, and so on and so forth. So I'm going to start with the 16s and um, I'll play the 16 one more time. Let's listen to the 16 note. That's mono again. So. What I learned actually from Jose Luis Pagan himself, who's been a mentor, a brother, and everything to me, fantastic human being, an extraordinary producer, writer, blah, 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 is that normally on one of the two sides, 
he adds the dot and it starts to sound like it's a ping pong delay. So it goes from one side to the next one. Why? Because this one is a 16, the other one is a 16 with a dotted. See how this sounds. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some See how it feels that it goes from left to right and when I play the, the same effect to the A notes which has a longer value in milliseconds and it's going to feel more notorious. Let's go to the A note. Again it's the same concept. On this one I already had applied that. Here's something that I haven't spoken before which is or I did. It's the feedback. The amount of repetitions that it will repeat after the first one, after the initial. Again, I like to modify this one in because of my OCD, I have the longer stems tend to be darker, so this one is 4,200, blah, blah, blah. This one will be probably in the 3,000s, how's that? Uh, because it's longer. Uh, this one will have less feedback than the other one because it'll, it takes longer to repeat, it's gonna sound louder. So here's the eighth note. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong So all those repetitions are caused by the feedback. And let me increase now the feedback by a significant amount so you guys can tell the difference. Bulletproof, 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 bulletproof. Without feedback. Bulletproof, bulletproof. There's no more than one repetition, and that's what the feedback does. Normally, I like to have some feedback. Depends. Uh, the only thing is that you gotta be careful. And this song is slow, and there's plenty of room for that. Uh, if the song is faster, you wanna have less feedback for the most part, just because otherwise it would create a a big uh, cloud in there. Let me go last but not least to the quarter note. Again, nothing has changed. The same concept, but on this one. I actually would have I have done uh, created something unique, which is I apply a, an EQ, a very drastic EQ. After the uh, after the uh, delay, and I created the feedback by sending it into itself. See, out of the aux return number four, I'm sending it into itself. You gotta be careful, and you gotta bring it up from extremely low and, and start playing and see how that goes. So I'm creating the feedback. What is different on this scenario than the other scenarios is that this repetition, because it's going into it and into it and into it every single time, it's going to have less and less low end, less and less high end and more and more. It's going to be more and more mid-rangey. Let's first hear it without any feedback. So I'm going to press command and click on it. Let's hear the uh, quarter note. Bulletproof and um, bulletproof, bulletproof. That's because of the EQ. Now let's add the feedback. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong as whiskey. Yeah, rather than don't try this at home. Deeper than the ocean. It's never any feelings of forever. Never giving up. Okay, so. You gotta play with this. Bulletproof and armored vest. A little more. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some. And what I've done, which you can do on top of that to any of the other delays, is I've sent some amount, and I will send a lot more, out of the delay into the reverb. So here's where you start having lots of fun, and this video has been probably the longest I've done, but I hope that I'm making sense and so I'm gonna increase a drastic amount of reverb out of the vocal, into the delay, out of the delay, into the reverb. Let's see. Bulletproof and armored vest, some strong as whiskey, yeah, brighter than the sunset. Of course, that's too much and what can be is of course you can automate the amount that you're sending into it. Bulletproof and armored vest. Some strong as whiskey. Yeah, brighter than the sunset. Oh, too me, Rangy. Deeper than the ocean. Gets never ending feelings of forever. Never giving up this. 
And of course, that gets boring, so you gotta play with the automation and bring it just probably to emphasize some of the notes. Bulletproof and armored vest, some strong as whiskey, yeah, brighter than a sunset, deeper than the ocean, gets never ending feelings of forever, never giving up this life. Permanently doing it together, doing it just right. I hope that you got the idea. Delays for you, phaser, flanger, chorus, doublers, slap, 16, 8 notes, quarter notes, and you could do half notes. This song, the BPM is 87. Uh, which would have made that the quarter, the half notes would be too long. I actually did try it before setting it up, but you can definitely try it on your song, see that the tempo is 120 or so. Again, for this, it's very important that you do get the right tempo of that song. Remember the formula, 60,000 60, divided by the BPM will give you the note of the quarter note, and then you can play from there. Uh, you're gonna have a basic music theory, but worst case scenario, most delay plugins would have these setups where you can set the value automatically to whatever you want to try. It's one other thing that you must try and lots of times something works and lots of times it doesn't work, but that's why you get yourself a palette and if the idea comes to mind, you'll give it a try. If it's close enough but needs some tweaking, you do so, or if not, try something else. I hope that this video has been useful. I thank you for listening, especially if you made it this far. Uh, again, Chanta, thank you, Sarah, Pepe, and everyone that is supporting me. Take care, have fun, and make some great records. Goodbye.